Hello everyone and once again welcome back to my channel Server Gyan. My name is Dr. Lokendra Singh. If you are new to my channel so please do like, share and subscribe and uh, please share with your friends if they want to become DevOps. Okay, so uh, within this video we are going to talk about what is DevOps. So guys, DevOps is not a tool or technology that is a methodology. Wherein like we need to discuss about different tools if you want to become a DevOps. So you should be knowing like a couple of tools like first of all Git. Git is source code management tool which is used for maintaining versioning of a file and where multiple developers can contribute in order to do the development multiple developers might be working on the same project so we will yeah, in coming time we are going to discuss about what is project what are the team uh, involved within all this process we are going to discuss about that then after we talk about jenkins so second tool here is going to be jenkins jenkins is a tool for cicd it means continuous integration and continuous deployment or delivery you can call that right so being a DevOps, you should be knowing about Jenkins, like uh, what is that, like uh, what is Jenkins, how do we use it, how do we integrate Jenkins with Git and other things as well. You should be knowing about Jenkins, like what is pipeline, how do we write pipeline, what is uh, like uh, DSL, it means domain specific language here. These sort of things you should be knowing in order to become a DevOps. Apart from that, configuration management tool like Ansible, Dev Chef, Puppet, any of the like tool you should be knowing in order to become DevOps. Moreover, you should be knowing about any of the con like containerized environment like Docker or Kubernetes. So Docker is going to provide containers and uh, Kubernetes is the particular orchestration tool which is used to manage containers which are provided from the side of Docker. So Docker is a tool to create do containers and K8 as it means Kubernetes is going to be orchestration tool in order to manage your running containers. Let us say that there is a particular environment where multiple containers are running and if due to high load or maybe lack of resources or uh, like application is not able to connect to some other containers or any process is, is, is stuck in container so how we are going to handle that situation so we need to have some orchestration mechanism using which we shall be able to figure out that when container is going down and how do we need to bring that up so if we are able to perform these sort of things it means we are using any of the orchestration tool so along with docker there is a particular tool known, known as swarm that comes and kubernetes is a uh, like separate tool which is used for like deployment automation and orchestration for containerized environment moreover wherever these tools are going to be installed so that is going to be linux operating system in order to work with linux operating system you should have basic knowledge of networking like what is ip address what are the particular protocols what are ports what are the type of IP addresses you should be knowing? So it means basic knowledge of networking you should know. I do not say that you need, that you need to be an expert of network in order to become a DevOps, but yes, basic knowledge, basic understanding of network you should have. Like you should be able to identify what is going to be public IP address, what is private IP address, what are the series of private IP address, what are the uh, like uh, like we have multiple classes like class A, B, C. So what are the ranges of these IP addresses then after what are going to be public IP address here what are going to be private IP address you should be able to understand like what is TCP what is UDP moreover what is OSI uh, reference model apart from that you should be able to identify like if there is an IP address written before you so, like what class it is and what is subnet mask of it. So if you know this much thing this 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 much then it means you are good to go for DevOps then after monitoring. So whatever we do, like whatever developers are doing here, what Jenkins is ready to create build out of it, then after go for deployment, Ansible is managing things like we are going to do deployment either on like uh, containerized environment or maybe on physical server, maybe on virtualized environment. So whatever we have done so far, that has to be monitored. So for monitoring, there are multiple tools being used. So you should be knowing about it, right? Like Nagios is there, Jabex, Prometheus, Isinga, or um, there are so many more right so any of the monitoring monitoring tool you should be knowing in order to ensure that yes being part of devops team you are able to monitor the infrastructure like if any site goes down so you should be uh, either getting alerts or if you don't if you are not getting alert you should be getting calls or maybe you should be able to troubleshoot the issue in real time fine so monitoring system has to be there then after database whatever applications you are going to use so for sure there has to be some or the other database being used in order to like let us say there are some transaction going on users are coming onto your platform and they are going to book some order they are going to order something from your website so what they ordered how much was the overall cost how much discount you want to give them and uh, what are the particular items user has already purchased if you want to maintain the like uh, checkout history the particular purchasing history you want to ensure so you should be using any of the database it could be mysql postgres oracle mongo maria 
or any sort of database you should be using it right then after logging is very necessary why logging is necessary let us say we have servers so it could be possible that all the traffic is being served from the single server but when we talk about containers so we might have more than 20 containers more than 200 containers more than 1000 containers we might have in order to serve our website so let us say if there is a particular complaint from a user side that I was trying to check out my, my uh, product, whatever I wanted to purchase, but I got some error. User uh, launched, uh, the particular end user raised a complaint. Now you need to check the logs that what happened that time. So you need to have logging enabled. It means centralized logging should be there. Like it is really, it is practically not possible to check logs within 1000 containers if, the, if uh, we have bigger infrastructure. So you can track the logs on a centralized location that is known as logging logging process. It means you can use ELK here, maybe Logly you can use or maybe any of the component you can use here in order to check the logs. Then after process, this is very very necessary. You should be knowing that what is build and release process here. How do how we are going to create a build? What are the requirement do we need to gather from developer? developer? Then after what are the like approval we need? Let us say we have QA team, it means quality assurance team, we have product team we have security team then after we have uh, like change management so whether we can push the changes or not uh, if the particular product where which we are going to release today so is that uh, depend like some other components are depending on that if there is any like production demo going on some customers are being shown like how we are going to work for you so if these sort of demos are going on so we should be like uh, considering like with change, change management team as well that whether we can push the change at this time or not we should ensure minimum downtime Moreover, we should be familiar with infrastructure as well, like what type of infrastructure we are going to use that like we have physical servers or we have virtual machines or we have containerized environment. Apart from that, we should be knowing about like what are the different type of infrastructure we have, like we have based on network segregation, we have based on utilization, we have based on like resources. So this sort of thing we should be knowing in, our, in, in order to become a DevOps, right? So uh, this is all about DevOps, like what DevOps is, what are the major tools we use here. And these are this is just like overview of DevOps, definitely like as you see there is a long list here. So definitely we are going to discuss like these components, right? So I hope that is it for this video guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a good time and happy learning. If you have any questions, so please do write in comment box. I shall be happy to assist you on that.